Hey, what's up? It's John Hansen, and on this week's Fantasy Points podcast, Brian Drake and I go deep dive. We go all up in there in terms of my 2024 draft plan. We talk about roster construction, which positions do you want to maybe hold off on drafting early on in your draft, some of the players that I'm into, all kinds of stuff going on. It is draft season, so stay tuned. We've got an hour of 20 minutes plus of great content, draft-related. It's a wonderful time of the year. And as always, thanks for liking and subscribing, and you're welcome. What? What? Why are you shaking your head? You're welcome. All across the fantasy universe, welcome to the Fantasy Points Podcast. I'm Brian Drake, joined by the guru, John Hansen, a publisher of FantasyPoints.com. John, it's the show everyone waits for all year. You've revealed your article at FantasyPoints.com. It's the draft plan show. I know myself for 20 plus years, I've been diving into this article. It's helped me win numerous fantasy leagues, and I got to believe the folks listening out there and the folks reading it at Fantasy Points, it's done the same for them. So it's a new year. It's a new article. Whew. You got to be feeling good, man. Get this, get this done. You got the move done. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you're looking forward to 2024 now, baby. You're ready to cook with some gas. Yeah, it does get me excited when I kind of lay my my cards down on the table and uh, here are my guys. And, you know, it does get me excited. I love being right about players. I'll do whatever it takes to be correct. Uh, I, I used to have that line on the radio. I'm addicted to being right. Uh, mm -hmm. It is a great feeling when you get something right. And I've been doing it for a long time. I also understand the horror of getting something wrong. So I don't want that as much as I want to get it right, I also don't want to get it wrong. Uh, so I try and pull from every single possible source that I possibly can. It all gets added to the algorithm uh, going on in my brain there as I kind of, you know, covered the entire off season um, from the end of the playoffs, went to the senior bowl, went to the combine this year, did the radio show uh, full time through what third week in June? Took some time off to move. Uh, now I'm settled. Already got my first tropical storm uh, out of the way. First weekend, uh, Brian. Ironically, we got very little water uh, where I'm at. I'm right on the coast, southeastern Georgia, uh, about hour and twenty south of Savannah. My old town, Haddonfield, New Jersey, right outside of Philly, about four blocks from my old house, got more flooding than I did here oh in, my in Georgia. So it's just weird, wild stuff. But yeah, that's a good point because I'm starting to get a little settled in. Got the camera shot going here, mm -hmm. uh, getting excited. And of course, games are coming up. You know, we're getting all the news and notes from training camp and all that. But for, for me, you know, not in every case because some guys don't play at all. But the games are very important. It's usually for these young, up-and-coming players. Now, I also learned last year, by the way, you know, the preseason can be complete BS as well. Two wit Kenny Pickett and the Steelers were perfect last year in the preseason. But it generally is a really good uh, precursor. Just the vibes, kind of taking it all in. We're recording this before the first weekend of games. So the when you guys are listening to this, the weekend games have already happened. So if you know somebody broke, you know, every bone in their body on the field, we're sorry. We, you know, we didn't couldn't predict the future. Our bad. Sorry. Right. Well, yeah, we're gonna do our best here uh, to go through John's draft plan that's up at fantasypoints.com. We're not giving it all away. We want you to go to fantasy points, sign up with code score more. We'll save you 10% off any plan over there. It's not only going to get you the article. It's going to get you redraft rankings, cheat sheets. Maybe you're into dynasty, best ball. Hell, college fantasy football is a thing, and we do it better than anybody else. DFS props, it's all there. Use code score more. John, when you got into this, did you think you'd be running a site that had college fantasy football and real betting tips and and dynasty at every level of fantasy football. I mean, it, it's absurd the amount of content we put out. Yeah, yeah. No, I've experimented with a lot of other things. Uh, NASCAR, 
uh, dabbled with baseball a little bit. I even did a little writing for that in the late nineties when I was actually playing, but, uh, yeah, football reigns, reigns supreme. So college football might be the next growth area in the fantasy space, but I will say I'm also very excited about the player props. Cause that's what I'm really, really into, uh, for the regular season. A lot of that has to do with understanding the matchups and getting all that right in terms of who's looking good, who's not, and all that. But I did see the player props coming, and I could tell you this as the former, former proud owner of playerprops.com, which I actually bought in the 90s and and sat on it for like freaking 13 years, and then nothing was going on, and I, I let it lapse. Not that it's this oh. lucrative domain or url but I, I i was literally the first human being to own the domain playerprops.com so i i hard to say i didn't see it coming Consider i did that in the 90s i was just a little too early oh man oh man so folks enjoy sit back relax you know maybe you're mowing the lawn you're in the car you're out for a run uh we're gonna have a good time here going through the draft plan just give me a little little nibble not not the whole thing and you might want to go back and listen to the last show because we really went deeper into john's lessons learned but uh kind of the cliff notes version here you know we don't want to get too crazy here uh you know going deep into that john but we want to pay attention to people's schedules this year especially early okay you also talked about seasons within the season, rookies, guys competing for roles, people solidifying a role. And finally, you want to focus on those play callers. So those really, I kind of wanted to boil down the lessons learned going into 2024. Anything else uh, for the, the people out there they need to know? Um, yeah, um, not really. I, I think, you know, certainly a bunch of little things that were, you know, certainly reaffirmed you know like the look let's not forget about motivations for running backs mm -hmm. you know miles sanders the year before balled out got a contract and was a complete dog uh last year so you'd be damn sure i'm thinking about motivation when it comes to javante williams who all of a sudden now looks like uh he's coming back uh, Sean Payton talking about how he looks like a completely different guy. He's down 11 pounds, things like that. So we're not going to mm -hmm. forget about that. But, you know, at the end of the day, not to make this overly simplistic, but again, I, I think people make this stuff overly complex at times. When we have young offenses, you know, immature offenses, raw quarterbacks, young quarterbacks, uh, maybe new play callers, things like that, boy, there is a lot that can go wrong. And the schedule is a way to tip off how things are going to go. Uh, many, many cases. I understand defense has changed from year to year, and there are fewer, you know, shut down defenses out there in general. But, you know, again, I'd have to look at the Pittsburgh Steelers as being a pretty good example. I mean, I was high on the offense. I think by the end of the preseason, let's be honest with each other here. Everyone in the freaking world was high on the Steeler offense with how they looked uh, in the preseason. Yeah, uh, turned out that was BS going up against vanilla defenses and things like that. But I would argue that just opening the season for the Steelers, you know, against San Fran and Cleveland those were those were scary numbers uh mm -hmm. scary they were scary numbers bad on the bad side uh then we had the raiders houston uh was pretty good on defense last year surprisingly and the steelers only scored six points uh and then they had baltimore so it just it seemed like that that first few matchups uh followed by some shakier performances after that uh in weeks three and four really just Unwrap things just unraveled. Najee Harris was kind of worthless for half the season. Uh, the receivers weren't doing anything. Uh, we can look at the Giants too. I mean, that was another example, ironically, of the preseason vibes meant absolutely nothing. But with the Giants, they have been in the past a good precursor 
uh, a good sign of things to come. Like in 2022, when the vibes were in fact good with the first year of Brian Dayball. But going into year two, I fell for it with freaking Darren Waller, you know, right? potentially balling. What happened? Well, no one could envision the O-line injuries and them being so god awful. But you you had a, a you got shut out uh at home against the Cowboys. I know that's a nasty pass rush. Then in in the ultimate irony, Daniel Jones was like I don't even know if he was a top 32 quarterback in points per game. He may not have even made the top 32. Of course, week 2 he was the QB1 for the week. So he went from hopeless in week 1 to the QB of the week, the number one QB of the week in week two, and then back to being completely hopeless in week three against the Niners, and then even in week four in Seattle, they, they were pretty terrible. They never recovered from that. So, you know, again, it's not easy, but when you have the small margin for error, I mean, we're not worried about the schedule with the Chiefs. We don't care. Who cares? Uh, they're the Chiefs. They'll do what they do. But, you know, most of these other teams and the players that we're looking at as sleepers, these teams are not, have not yet necessarily arrived. So I do think we need to pay a little bit more attention to the schedule, at least early in the season, so we don't get off on such a bad foot that it just everything completely unravels. Mm -hmm. Good point. Uh, I looked it up. Daniel Jones, although he only played in six games, 9.5 fantasy points. That's good for a QB 43 on the season. Jen, holy smokes. <laughs> QB1 though in week two. QB1 in week two. QB1 in your hearts. Hey, let's take a quick time out right here. When we come back on the other side, we're getting into it, baby. It's draft plan time here on the Fantasy Points Podcast. All right. Welcome back in, everybody. It's Drake. It's Hanson. We're talking draft plan here. All right, John, you put uh, some of your approach for what you want to look at here. A a people get into the article and then you list the 12. And this struck me when I was reading the article that just dropped at fantasypoints.com. The 12 it consists of the 12 players you really want to base your draft around. It's kind of like, you know, your your guys. People put out all these articles this year. It's my guys, it's my dudes, whatever. Uh, you know, you took out the top two rounds because there's no reason to have those guys in there. You know, no shit. We know you should draft Tyreek Hill or uh, you know, Saquon Barkley. We'll get into more of that guys later. But when I look at this list of 12, and again, we're not going to give them all away, there are names that jump out at me, and they're not even in really ADP order. Number one, Jordan Love. We can kind of talk quarterback plan here a little bit, but Jordan Love is somebody you've talked about all offseason. You named it the Summer of Love, and he is being drafted as a top 12 guy, but it's a great value. You don't have to spend a first four or five round pick like the guys who are going up there and grabbing Hurts and grabbing Josh Allen this year. It's a real discount on a guy who's got some of the best weapons in the league. I mean, yeah, my approach, and we were just talking about this off the air, not not to bounce around, but there, there's there's always an angle. Mm -hmm. Like you know, when when there isn't an angle, it's it's boring. Like um, I'm trying to think of an example. I'm, of course, I had an angle on McCaffrey on a negative side of things, and where are we? Uh, by the way, with that, I mean, it could be yeah, nothing. John, yeah, John, you were saying earlier in the season how you were like, I'm not in on McCaffrey at 101. He's getting a little old. I think something's going to happen to him. Boop. We got this calf injury here. He had a calf, a calf injury last year, right? And you know, he's getting a little older. It's tough. So let's just pivot off that real quick it, since we're talking McCaffrey here. I mean, do you feel vindicated? He's going to play. It's not like he's dead. But do you feel vindicated with your call now of like, hey, he's going to get nicked up a little bit and you're even more sure that you're not going to take him at 101 in drafts. I mean, it's always difficult because we're, we're speculating on injuries and mm -hmm. it, it, it you, you can really come across as a real jackass, but honestly, if I'm being dead honest a little bit, because you know, my point, the entire off season, really, I didn't say this, like I'm saying it this year, uh, because last year there really weren't amazing alternatives. Mm -hmm. You mean like I get it? Okay, you know, uh, traded from traded to the Niners the year before mid season. It went pretty well. Let's let's go let's go back to the well. It, it and and it 
I get it. It's like having 1.5 players, but you know, this year and we, we have other guys who could be 1.5 players. Yeah. Jonathan Taylor is one of them. When he broke out that year, was that three years ago now already? That was like having 1.5 players. Bijan Robinson is certainly talented enough. Our friend Ladanian Tomlinson, I asked him straight up before Bijan played in the league, do you do you see yourself in Bijan? Do you like the comp? He's absolutely love it. I'm all in. Same deal. Uh Brees Hall, you know, and then of course Jameer Gibbs is really good, you know, like very, very intriguing, like young durable versatile in a really good spot so i guess my main point was why are we risking it and i did bring up how i thought mccaffrey did not look right in that game what was that week 17 against dc i had him going for 30 grand i watched his every damn move <laughs> i did not think he looked very good in that game and then boom he gets hurt so maybe he was nursing something uh going into that one Yes, he looked pretty good in the playoffs, but not great. He was uh, kind of shut down on the ground, as I did predict, uh, in that Super Bowl, and I love the over on his catches, and he crushed that because uh, I thought they'd shut him down uh, as a runner, which they did, again. But he also had three full weeks to rest up. So my thought was, well, what if we get something that is somewhat debilitating like this in week four? when he's now a year older he's had uh he's played 40 games the last two seasons uh he's got just under 2000 total touches in the career now in the NFL you know what what does Brees Hall have 400 what does Bijan have 300 290 whatever like that's a big difference so i guess that was my point like why why are we risking it uh yeah you want to try to get 1.5 players but i'm not going to risk I'm not going to go out on a limb trying to get 1.5 players only to get 0.5 players because that's what McCaffrey could be. I mean, here we are in August. We've got a calf issue that we had last year. That, that to me, is very worrisome. It is somewhat reminiscent of Cooper Cup last year. People weren't panicking. I was like, no, no, no. I'm out, out mm -hmm. on Cooper Cup last year. Yeah, it's, it's funny you mention that because whenever I see these guys now in camp, and there's a lot of guys that are popping up with injuries. Puka Nakua's got this bursa sack issue, and we see guys with ankles and knees and whatever. If I ever hear anybody with a high ankle sprain, I'm out. Head for the hills. Forget about it. I'll see you next year. Let somebody else draft you. That will not heal. I don't care if the guy's playing again in four weeks. He is never right. going to be right on that high ankle sprain. That's all. Like one thing I've just, you know, beat into my brain is if a guy's got that high ankle trade him get rid of him let him be somebody else's problem so i had mccaffrey on our top 200 sheet like i have to make some sort of compromise mm -hmm. obviously i had him at five so you know if you've been using the cheat sheet um shout out to my my boy pete incavilia who texted me because he needed the guru rankings uh ah. he's he's probably watching this uh thank you inky the inky dinky man uh maybe, maybe we helped you out there a little bit by ranking cd lamb uh tyree kill Brees hall Brees hall oh and Bijan over uh actually no not Bijan, just Brees hall over mccaffrey really it comes down to this too when you're talking running backs i know we were going to talk quarterback screw it we're talking early round running backs now but i have this thought you can draft next year because not everyone's gonna have the first pick you can draft next year's 101 and 102 this year if you draft Brees hall or Bijan robinson if you get them in the middle rounds yeah. like they're going to be the first two picks next year i'm calling it right now i'm yeah. putting my money where my mouth is they're the they're yep. the 101 and 102 next year so yep. uh you know that could lead into what you have in your running back plan so we'll shelve quarterbacks for a second let's go to the running backs because this is mm -hmm. where we are You've said that you've, uh, uh, you know, you've never been more confident lately to take like four running backs than you are this year. And you listed several high end wide receivers who were going in round one that you said, I'm not taking these guys. I'll take my running backs that I love over these wide receivers right now uh, and giving yourself a, a running back in round one, which flies in the face of everything that people were doing last year when it's just wide receiver drunk. You got to get a million wide receivers and you know f the running back position 
Yeah, and I was doing that too, by the way. I, I kept saying, uh, follow the money uh, because all these White House were getting paid big money and then Jonathan Taylor's got to like do this huge dramatic holdout. So I'm like, no, no, let's, um, I'll certainly take a running back in the first three rounds, uh, but, but let's go wide receiver heavy. Uh, this year, I'm not as inclined to do that for two reasons. Number one, I, I do think that the elite tier at wide receiver has taken a hit. Uh, part of that is Justin Jefferson's quarterback situation. Yep. Um, you know, but again, I, I feel like there there's a, a pretty big drop off after Lamb, Hill, and Chase. I like Amon Ra, mm -hmm. but you know, maybe Jamison Williams gets a little bit more this year. Obviously, it's it's time for him to get a little bit to gain a little bit of that target share. I know Josh Reynolds left. I do like Garrett Wilson, but he's got the Aaron Rodgers situation. I do like AJ Brown. I'm who doesn't, but mm -hmm. I've been skeptical more than not with AJ Brown incorrectly. But if if I'm skeptical about somebody, even in, while he's still relatively young, something usually pops and, and it happens. Uh, so maybe this is the year. I don't know. Uh, all I know is I heard directly that they traded AJ Brown because they had the Titans major concerns about the state of maybe both of his knees. Uh, to his credit, though, he's been very durable. Puka, you know, hey, he was unbelievable. Stafford is an older quarterback. I mean, c can we do it again? I mean, he'll be good. There's no doubt about it, but that good, you know, so I do think there's a drop off there. Um, and I also think that the number of like, in terms of the tier one guys, there's also like a slew of very good tier two and tier three guys. I know we all want studs, yeah. Uh, but look, Puka was undrafted in many leagues last year and he was a stud. And so you can get, you don't need to get your quote unquote studs in just the first or second round. Uh, I, I'm talking about, well, Debo. Devontae Smith and uh, Michael Pittman. Uh, we'll see about Ayuk with uh, Pittsburgh, but for now, George Pickens. Uh, and then we, the list goes on and on and on. Mm. There, it's a really, really deep group, and there's a lot of sameness there. Uh, so on one hand, by the way, I am inclined to get one of those three at the very top of round one. But if I don't have a crack at Lamb Hill or Chase – that's the difference this year. Last year, I wasn't really preaching anything at running back. I didn't even like Bijan last year, uh, but as a pick. But this year, again, I, I think mm -hmm. the landscape has shifted a little bit to where we actually have four, at least four. Maybe Barkley can be the fifth. And I do have Barkley right outside of round one. Guys who truly deserve to be drafted in round one. I mean, that's it. Like, why are we worried about running backs? Because like, these guys get hurt. And sometimes maybe they have a limitation like a Derrick Henry. Oh, we're down 21 nothing. Derrick Henry's screwed. Uh, so my criteria at running back has always been, if I'm using an early pick on you, you better be young, generally durable, and you better be versatile and not game script dependent. And those four guys, Jonathan Taylor, Jameer Gibbs, Brees Hall, and B. John Robinson fit the bill. So – while everyone's a little worried and afraid of the running backs, I see it as an opportunity to to go all in on that anchor running back. And and you can certainly fill in the blanks, no problem, I think, at wide receiver due to the outstanding depth. Yeah, and you said you would take those guys, especially if you're drafting middle to end of the first round over guys like Jefferson, Amon Ra, Puka, A.J. Brown. So if you're in that yeah. back half of the first round and you can eye up you know, Brees Hall, you know, wherever Brees Hall goes, maybe Jameer Gibbs, Jonathan Taylor, that's more realistic uh, at the end of the first round. There's still going to be great talent coming back to you in round two. And that could, you know, lead us into some wide receiver talk. But you know, if you want to get your hands on a difference maker, guys who can win you your league, you might have to take one of these running backs in the first round that John's talking about. Bijan, Brees, Jameer, JT, if we want to lump Barkley in there, because again, folks, you're trying to win a fantasy league. You're not going to win with a bunch of meh, like average yeah. players. I've done so many mocks, John, where I look at my team and I'm like, oh, I got good value. This is where you're supposed to take this guy. And I like him and his role. And I look at the end and I go, 
none of these guys are difference makers. None of these guys are going to win me a league. Like right. draft dudes who are, you look at and you go, that guy can win me a week. This guy can blow up and be like the guy at the position. And if you look at yeah. JT Gibbs, like Gibbs is right on the doorstep of that. I know right. he's got uh, Monty there as well, but it's a great line, really good play caller. It's all the things that we're preaching here at Fantasy Points. And, uh, you know, Gibbs, you're going to see him fall, I think, in the second round in some leagues, John. So I love the call on him. Yeah, and by the way, uh, yeah, we we are uh, the the ADD brothers here today. We're bouncing all over the damn place. I know. <laughs> but um, in the article, I did a, a draft uh, from the nine spot. You know, I did a shit ton of mocks as well, and a lot of trial and error, actually trying to find the right route. And I actually did have access to two of the four flawless four. Ooh. Because I I went Jameer Gibbs at nine and Jonathan Taylor fell to me there. At, what would that be? Uh, Fourteen or whatever. Thirteen. I've seen uh, it happen. Absolutely. Yeah. I've seen it in drafts. Now, two things. Number one, I wouldn't plan on that. And if I'm drafting at the end of round one, I do think the play and it's this is normally the case is to go with a running back and a wide receiver, uh, if at all possible. Because you, you do like to have that alpha type to hang your hat on. Mm -hmm. You know, Garrett Wilson would be a great one. Like if I'm opening, uh, if I take Gibbs at one in, and then coming back uh, on the hook and, and Jonathan Taylor's not there, but Garrett Wilson is, I am thrilled. So I think that's <laughs> the, the optimal route. But to my point about the depth of receiver, here's what I did. And, you know, this is all part of the draft plan. And all made possible by my top value quarterback, Jordan Love, and my top value tight end. In terms of the tight ends being drafted as starters, mm -hmm. Jake Ferguson. Turn Ferguson, so baby. All, yeah, baby. This was all thanks to Love and Ferguson. Uh, but I opened with Jameer Gibbs and Jonathan Taylor. And here's my wideouts. Debo Samuel, Devontae Smith, George Pickens, Christian Kirk. Then I got Christian Watson. I think I'm good at wide receiver. I got Khalil Shakir as well, and then Brandon Cook. So I feel like I'm going to be good at wide receiver, and I'm damn good at running back with Gibbs and Taylor. I believe I'll be good at quarterback with Love and tight end with Ferguson. So that would be a damn good team. Gibbs, Taylor, Samuel, Skinny Batman, Pickens, Kirk, Love, Ferguson, Watson, Tajay Spears, Khalil, Shakir. I did take Dobbins, uh, what the hell, uh, Brandon Cooks, and my guy Tyler Conklin. I feel like that's a great team. I love Devontae Smith, and we've talked about it here on the show. I think he's going to have a dynamite year. All reports out of Eagles camp, are, is he's uncoverable. Here's again, let's go back to that CMC news and Brandon Ayuk. Debo Samuel got paid, okay? They paid him a year ago. Remember why he was so dominant two years ago? It was because he was running the football. That's why he wanted to get yeah. paid. He was basically playing two positions. So you could, Christian McCaffrey's a little beat up. Maybe they want to take the ball out of his hands a little bit more. Who knows? Maybe he misses a few games. You think they're just going to roll with, you know, uh, Elijah Mitchell and Jordan Mason and Isaac Garendo back? To Hell no. You're going to see Debo in the backfield. I, I'm curious to see if his ADP adjusts uh, yeah. once Ayuk gets out of there. And, you know, who knows? Maybe by the time you're listening to this, he is. Uh, but I, the Debo pivot for folks in rounds two and three is going to be huge. Yeah, if we I, I'm way ahead of it. It's already all in the article. It's been baked in for like five days. Uh, I've been working on the article. It's all in. If you notice in the article, all the, the fake teams I draft, they all have Debo. Uh, and you probably remember, I mean, the year Debo came out, I was a Debo guy. He was my number one guy over A.J. Brown. I interviewed him on the radio. I actually predicted to him that he'd be drafted by the Niners because I knew that uh, Kyle Shanahan had him at the uh, at the Senior Bowl, and then I guess going into year two or maybe three, I'm sitting there at the combine, and I love Debo. I mean, and he was like, he ended up being my number one sleeper or target that year at wide receiver. I guess that was 2022. I don't even the, the years are running together, but <laughs> I'm at the combine. Kyle is sitting there getting ready to wait uh, to go up to his podium. I've asked the man. 
20 questions. I've seen them out and about. I don't get personal with the coaches, but a lot of them know who I am. Like they, Oh, that guy, I've seen that guy, you know? So I cozy up to Shanahan and I'm like, coach, am I crazy? But have you just given Debo, like not even half of what you can do with Debo? He's like, eh, no, it's actually not crazy. And then that was going into the year he did. He lit it up running the rock here. So I, I love me some Debo Samuel. I uh, cr fingers crossed that he can stay healthy. But if Ayuk is God, that is massive for Debo. I mean, I could argue he might be a top 12 wide receiver. Yeah, you're talking about 2021 when he not only, you know, had 121 targets and, and had 1,400 yards, but he also had 59 rushing attempts and scored eight touchdowns on the ground. So, I mean, yeah, that's pretty, great. that's as badass as it gets uh, mm -hmm. right there. All right, let's take a quick timeout. We'll regroup here and then we'll come back. We'll keep attacking the draft plan show on the other side. We'll talk. A little bit more about the running backs, and then we'll get into the wide receivers, tight ends, and of course, the quarterbacks here with the guru on the draft plan show. All right, John, we're having a lot of fun. We're talking about your draft plan for 2024. We're kind of, you know, all over the place, but that's what happens when, you know, you've got so many great ideas. The full article is over at fantasypoints.com. Also, when you're shot out. No, just kidding. Yeah, we're shot out of a can today, baby. Uh, but yeah, I literally, I don't think I've eaten today. I had a red bull and I, I don't advocate this. I had a red bull at like, I don't know, seven in the morning when I was waiting to get a state inspection. And I don't think I've eaten. I just kind of sat down here in my basement doing work. Uh, so yeah, eating, uh, helps don't just, uh, you know, pound red bulls all day. I got, I got like a cliff bar in me. That's it today. I got one sitting in front of me right here. Maybe they could sponsor the show. Uh, I, I I'll start eating it uh, during the breaks. <laughs> so we talked a little bit about running back and your, you know, your flawless four guys you want to get your hands on in the first round. And then you said you're okay waiting a little bit if you want. Um, looking at your top 12 guys that you really like, you're saying this, these are my guys. These are who I want to rock and roll with this year. I want to just kind of cherry pick a guy or two yeah. uh, to talk about because you've mentioned Derek Henry already. And He's a guy that you can get in round two. Maybe you do get wide receiver. You got an early pick. You take a receiver yeah. in round one. Mm -hmm. Derrick Henry, somebody in this offense. We know the offense is going to be based around Derrick Henry. He's a foundational running back. He needs to get a lot of touches, and he's going to get, I'm going to say, 20, 25 carries a game and yep. just wear down the competition here. Derrick Henry in round two, even though he doesn't catch passes at all, I think is going to be a really nice pick for people. Yeah. And I mean, this is saying something because I've really never been a Henry person. Um, mm -hmm. This just, I, th I think I, I'm with everyone else who, well, maybe not everyone, but most people seem to just have this feel like, oh, it's just, he, he feels like a raven. You know what I mean? By the way, right. um, I, I had to do a drive down to Florida. I do not live very far at all from Derrick Henry's hometown. Uh, you Lee, Florida, I believe that's how you pronounce it right there in the Northern portion. I, I was driving and I'm like, Oh, home of Derrick Henry. That's pretty cool. Anyways. Um, I just feel like it's going to work in general and he's going to, they're going to move the ball, uh, consistently. They're going to get scoring opportunity. Like he's going to score every week. Uh, I just, I just feel, uh, very good about that. I know their whole line is been you know restructured a little bit here but you know it's a, maybe a rare case of where it's just you you, you just buy into the culture marriage mm -hmm. there and I, i'm buying and obviously the ravens are always competitive so we don't worry about them falling way behind their defense is good uh th they'll be fine there so yeah henry's going to get the rock he's going to deliver and i do think if i'm at the top of round one i'm going wide receiver as much as it might it might pain me because i do love those four running backs i can't pass up chase lamb and tyreek especially tyreek and lamb uh, i can't pass those dudes up so the consolation prize would be derrick henry now uh to back up a moment uh there are only two running backs that i quote unquote like as as your anchor running backs in round two the other would be saquon 
Mm -hmm. The third who's in that mix is Travis Etienne. But what what are your thoughts on Etienne? I, I've done it a little bit. I'm not down on him. Uh, the guy was the RB3 last year. Not a horrible backup plan, let's say. If you do go wide receiver, let's say you're at three and mm -hmm. you take Tyreek and you're banking on Derrick Henry in round two, he goes right in front of you. Travis Etienne, at the very least, I presume Saquon would be gone too. That's not bad. So if you start a draft Tyreek and Etienne, that's not bad. I feel like Derrick Henry's will be a little bit more powerful and explosive, but that's not bad. Yeah, and e Etienne, he's got to come through a little bit more of, as a receiver this year to, to come through. He had one receiving touchdown. He's a better receiver than that. Uh, I know people talked about when he came out of Clemson, it was kind of these little manufactured touches, and he just caught like real easy passes out of the backfield. He didn't They didn't challenge him a lot there. But yeah. uh, losing Calvin Ridley, and you know, now they replace Gabe Davis, and they got the rookie Brian Thomas in there. I think you want to lean a little more on Etienne because it's going to narrow that tree. It's, it's Etienne, it's Kirk, and it's Ingram. Uh, I think maybe Doug's going to want to take a little bit off of Lawrence's plate. Maybe they say, let's feed ETN, and then we can back him up a little bit with Tank Bigsby. Um, I'm okay with him you know, in the second round. I'd rather maybe if I could get him in the third, I'd like that a lot more. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to get him there, right. but you know, it, it's tough because when I'm going through the second round and I'm seeing some of those guys, I often have a choice. It's between, you know, like, am I going to take Devon Achan or am I going to take Travis ETN? I know Achan is a guy who, you know, it, it, it was all efficiency. Those numbers are going to be impossible to replicate, John. Right, and, yeah. But when I look at him, I go, this is a kid. It's just what we talked about. If he hits and he, you know, he does just 85% of what he did last year, like he can win you a week and he can be that elite guy. Like to me, he's very close to uh, Jameer Gibbs. I just wonder, can he hold up? Because he's a slight guy. I remember oh, yeah. Texas or Texas A&M when he was coming out. I'm like, this kid's not big. Like he he's not meant to grind through the tackles. But maybe in today's NFL, you don't have to. I generally, though, look, there's a fine line there. You don't want to overrate volume like mm -hmm. people did last year with Alexander Madison. Not me, thankfully. But everyone's like, oh, Madison, he's the guy. I'm sure he is. But he's a jag as well. Um, so you don't want to overrate volume, but you also don't want to overrate what Devon HN brings to the table, the home run hitting speed. I do not like backing running backs who are big play dependent. I've never been a Saquon Barkley guy. Sorry. I, I don't think he's a very good running back. Honestly, offensive weapon. Great. He is, he's tremendous, but as a traditional runner of the football, like we're going to line up and it's coming and you got to stop it more often than not you stop it with saquon barkley um but then the box analysts say oh you were wrong because they stopped 17 of 20 runs but he did slip by for a gain of 59 on one of them you know what i mean like <laughs> i i do not like relying on big plays and you are going to be relying on big plays most likely with devon hn back to etn real quick mm-hmm the worst running back room in football behind him. I mean, these guys stink. They no keep on to talk of Bigsby. I mean, he was garbage last year. I, like, I'm shocked he's still on the team. Yeah. And then Dearness, hey, we God love you, Dearness. I mean, you'll grind out 3.9 yards of carry for a week or two or three if we need you. But, man, th that's a jag. That is not a needle mover. I mean, really, really bad running back depth chart. I don't know what the hell they're doing, honestly. Like, you might want to get some some better personnel here, but maybe they are not giving up totally on Bigsby. But if, if Bigsby doesn't improve dramatically, I I don't know what the hell they're going to do. I don't want to give away any a ton a ton more guys here in your uh, the twelve, which you can read about these guys in John's draft plan article at fantasypoints.com. But there is one guy that I have to bring up because you and I are sharing a brain on him, and it's Ken Walker. So I have never liked Ken Walker. If you've heard me talk on Sirius right. XM, I've never been into Ken Walker. I just, maybe it's a blind spot and it, I, it's something I need to get over. But I mean, Ken Walker finished last year. He was 20th in fantasy points per game in PPR, but it's a new offense. It's a new scheme. And it seems from what they're saying in camp, John, 
like they find Ken Walker to be like this, like he's like their new Christian McCaffrey. Like they're going to use him every way possible. And Zach Charbonnet might just play a more complimentary role. Uh, yep. And if we can get him involved more in the passing game and he can catch more than 30 balls in a year and actually score a freaking touchdown or two, like the value you're getting on Ken Walker in a division where you have to win shootouts is going to be just tremendous. Here's a team I drafted from the number one spot, and this is why Walker's on my list. I was with you. I, I thought he was too much of a freelancer, mm -hmm. um, bouncer, very poor vision, things like that. But I did kind of kick myself last year for not giving him more love. Uh, yes, I was worried about Zach Charbonnet uh, being more of a decisive downhill runner, a new – you know, Pete Carroll probably wanted that. I'm sure he did. Uh, but turned out Charbonnet, and, you know, he was banged up, just a rookie. Maybe he'll look and show a lot better this year. But he was kind of jag-like, honestly. He wasn't bad, but he he, ah, he was just jag-like. I do like Walker uh, as a pick uh, late fourth. Uh, it, let's say if you're – let's say in this – case i opened with cd lamb and to my point i came back with derrick henry which i like that pairing round three i took debo samuel but then i had that long wait going all the way down the board for three and then back over uh for my fourth round pick uh which would have been the last pick of round four at that point you know i didn't really i wasn't i guess feeling that the tight ends i guess Maybe McBride was gone by that point. I already had two good wide receivers, so I wasn't hurting there by any stretch. I wasn't taking my quarterback there. Mm -hmm. So while I'm not necessarily inclined to get two running backs in my first four picks, it's not a bad build this year, I don't think at all, uh, with these running backs being a little bit more viable and showing uh, more potential, I think, with with some of the guys on the, in the in the pool here. I thought it, I think Walker is a a solid RB two that you can get you know again right around fifty overall fifty five that that is not a bad price to pay for someone of his pedigree let's say um, you know again I kicked myself last year a little bit because you know he he does move very very well he's got a lot of juice I love juice got a lot of zuzu. A lot of sauce, whatever you, whatever the hell you want to call it, he definitely has that. I always say he teleports from one place to the other on the field. He is a pretty good threat in the passing game. And again, Charbonnet turned out to be a little bit of a jag. I think Walker's price tag is down just a little bit from last year. So adding it all up, I'm like, yeah, I, it all comes to a point where I'm like, big picture, final answer. I do like Ken Walker this year. You know, and they've got a new offensive coordinator in Ryan Grubb. He's coming in from the college game. Uh, you know, I believe he was at Washington last year, and they they had a really good offense. Yep. If you want to get Ken Walker on your team, you're going to follow the guru's rankings because I'm looking at your custom cheat sheet right here at running back. You've got Ken Walker at running back 14. If I pull up the ADP from sites like ESPN and Sleeper, he's the running back 17. So you're ahead of the market on Ken yeah. Walker. Uh, so again, that's what we want our listeners and our readers to do. We want our readers and listeners to get these guys and get them ahead of, of the consensus. Uh, remember with ADP, that's not when you have to take somebody. That's when everybody else is taking somebody. So if we love a guy and John writes this in the article, you want to go get him. You like, you'll have a guy around ahead of ADP because you want to make sure that people go out and get yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a great thing, uh, to point out. I, I, I always try to marry when a player is going off the board per ADP in the marketplace and when I think he should be going off the board. Uh, a lot of that has to do with my positional rankings, which are all derived from projections. But let me see if I can come up with another example on Walker just, just to be, well, here you go. I think this is a great example. So his overall ADP is 52. So what what is that? Uh early early 5th? Uh yep, that's a just uh, the fourth pick of the 5th round. Yeah. I have him at 38. 
So I, I'm saying early third is is okay. Uh, early fourth. Early fourth. Uh, yeah. So basically, that's a little bit more than a round over his ADP. That would be an example of like, okay, there's a guy I'm saying by the ranking draft them and if you actually print out the top 200 and you kick it old school like i would do you just cross the guys off your list and then you'll be in the fifth round and you'll look up and you'll see a bunch of guys crossed off but above them you'll see mr ken walker mm -hmm. and that's that's how i would use the the cheat sheet uh because i i do have a good feel for 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 these pricings um certainly get them wrong all the time when i make 200 of them but I got to tell you, the last two years, I, I go back and I, more often than not, I, I have the the marketplace versus my ranking. I I marry them very well, and I have these guys slotted very well. Like if a guy does well, I'm like, oh, let me see. Oh, there it was. I was over the markets. You know, again, doesn't not every time, but it, that's a good example of me trying to say, give you a nudge, like, hey, this guy's a good draft pick. You know, wh where we are right now. And if you guys are playing on some of these kind of platforms like Yahoo, ESPN, the ADP on there, if you're drafting at the, a computer, they're all wacky, right? Have that cheat sheet printed out. If you're paying for a fantasy point subscription, which you should be, if you're listening to this podcast, print the damn thing out and just cross them off as you go. Trust me, you'll have a much better team. Well, John, let's move over to our, our wide receiver plan. Uh, again, I'm kind of going off your the elite 12 players. These are 12 guys that you want to formulate, you know, your drafts around. Uh, and I'm just kind of cherry picking guys. And again, to not give everybody away, but we talk Christian Watson a lot on this podcast. He's your top breakout candidate. And yeah. as you mentioned just a moment ago, you did a draft and he was like your wide receiver four. you had Debo, you had Devante, I think you had Kirk, and then you have Christian Watson. The reason roster construction matters is because you've got Really solid guys, you're one and two. Boom, boom, Devontae and, and Debo. And we think they're going to have great years. Kirk, if he comes through in a PPR, he's going to be fantastic. If Christian Watson hits, he jumps in. Maybe he's your flex. Maybe he's your wide receiver, too. He's a guy now who's a top 12 wide receiver in fantasy because of his skill set, his quarterback, and the offense that he's in. And you got him as a wide receiver four. So love the call on Watson. Anything else on the young Green Bay receiver? Well, I mean, I will say it's all it all it all ties together too. Um, so why would I endorse Ken Walker as an RB two in the fourth or fifth when I know that everybody's loading up on wide receivers? Well, part of the reason is because of people like Christian Watson. Mm -hmm. So when you have guys like that, Jamison Williams, I'm also very high on the other guys that I really like uh, further down the board. Um, I do like Khalil Shakir as a breakout, Josh Palmer. Like, there's some really, really good picks available outside of, you know, round seven or eight, let's say, or mm -hmm. seven. Uh, so Watson is a great pick on its own, eighth or ninth round, no matter what. It, it's a great pick. Uh, it's not going to crush you if it doesn't hit. Yeah, he might be a little volatile. Put him at the back of your depth chart, your – third receiver or you know your flex or whatever second flex it's not going to hurt you could help you could could help you know could crush it he's got the pedigree everything is there i know there's only one ball and all that we've talked about how he commands the ball but you know he's a good pick on his own but he's also part of the plan and because we know watson is going to be there for the taking and maybe a jameson williams is a backup plan Mm -hmm. This is one of the reasons why we're going to try and balance it out a little bit more this year and and maybe get a couple of running backs in the first four to five rounds. Yeah, you don't have to follow that best ball approach. And, you know, if you listen to a lot of fantasy podcasts, I'm sure you get inundated with all this best ball talk. And trust me, we do a great job of it at our site as well. But in that people start thinking like, oh, this is ADP. This is how home leagues and redraft are going to go when people are taking three receivers to start a draft. In a home league, John, that's not the case. People are going to be taking running backs. You're going to see those tight ends creep up a little bit. Hell, you might see a guy take a quarterback or two in the second, third round of your home league. So having right. Christian Watson, Jamison Williams down the board, uh, you mentioned Shakir, you know, these are the guys that are going to be your flexes, your wide receiver threes. 
Uh, and, and you're going to be winning when guys are scrambling to fill other positions, and it allows us to wait at quarterback and at tight end. Uh, any other wide receivers you wanted to mention here uh, that, you know, guys you're really planning on? I know we, we've referenced a few so far. Yeah. Well, you know, I, as I mentioned earlier, and again, we, I know we're bouncing around, but but for me, there's always some sort of angle. So, mm-hmm. you know, let, let, let's take a look at a couple wide receivers that I like. And um, you can even ask me the angle randomly uh, if you scroll down to the Hanson 50. Yep. That's where I narrow down basically 215 players to 50. So that's uh, 75% removed. So 75% of the player pool, I'm like, I don't want anything to do with you. And I'm trying to be a little, a little bit more concise, decisive, uh, and and really narrow it all down. So you ask me about a particular wide receiver, okay. and I'll tell you what the angle is and why I think he's a good pick when he's being drafted. Your favorite pick in the seventh round is Chris Godwin. And uh, what is the angle behind Godwin here? Who's going to be moving into the slot? Uh, don't want to. That's give the it angle. Away. <laughs> I mean. I mean that that is the angle. Uh, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I, I can even like kind of call it up. But last year, uh, Godwin, I've always been a Godwin guy uh, yeah. on Sirius XM. Uh, he was my breakout receiver in 2019. Uh, I called him God Chriswin, and he crushed uh, 86 grabs for 1333, 15.5 yards to catch, nine nine grabs. He also got hurt. Uh, of course, I had him in the championship in the ACI and couldn't start him that, that, that game. But mid season last year, I'm like, wow. And I was lukewarm on Godwin last year, still worried about the ACL, but mid season, I'm like, what, what, eh, eh, what's going on here? Like he's kind of mm-hmm. dead. It's like they need to. And I said it on Sirius X. I'm like, this dude needs to go in a slot. I'm sorry. Didn't and then he start it, tweeting out stuff. What's that? I think Godwin's wife started tweeting stuff out about like, you got to start getting him to ball. Like yeah. she got pissed. And I think it happened right around that point. He had 11 targets a week, 13, uh, granted awful catch rate. He only caught five of them. I don't know what the hell happened there. Uh, but then the very next week, 12 targets, 10 grabs. So the next week after that, uh, week 16, 10 targets, six grabs in the finale, seven targets, six grabs. So, that's what I'm looking at. We're looking at obviously the Cooper Cup role, mm-hmm. essentially uh, in this offense under uh, under the new offensive coordinator, of course, who comes from uh, that Ram coaching tree. So I am uh, feeling really good, Liam Cohn. I am feeling very good now. I know Jalen McMillan. I uh, haven't checked on him in the last couple of days. He's a good dude. I, I interviewed him I like at the combine. Him. Great guy. I liked him a lot. And he's really good. And I know he's opening up some eyes. Trey Palmer's also interesting. Uh, but yeah, I, I really like Godwin this year because he's going to get those slot snaps, which is everything. Uh, he's a monster in the slot. Outside of that, he's kind of just a guy. Maybe he'll be a little bit better another year removed from the ACL. But that is the angle. He's a little cheaper. And I think his situation overall is a little better, even though they are breaking in a new offense. Liam Cohen, again, coming from the McVay tree, Cooper Cup, Godwin, they're comparable players. Boom. Uh, That's the angle. And I want to just remind everybody, nobody loves slot more than the guys at at Fantasy Points. Uh, Call back to the radio show. Graham Barfield had a great tweet. You know Graham from his wonderful work at Fantasy Points. Four straight seasons as a top 20 wide receiver was Chris Godwin in points per game when a full-time slot receiver. Again, he's back this year. You'll look at some of the seasons that he dominated. He was wide receiver nine in 2021. He played in the slot 70% of the time. He was wide receiver two in 2019, 55% of the time. There's a correlation here. It's a cause and effect. When he goes to the slot, hey, guess what? He does well. Uh, I yep. love the call on Jalen McMillan too. All right, let me hit good you. Dynasty prospect, very much, very much too. Because who good. knows how long Evans hangs around? He's always been healthy, but you never know uh, what could happen if one of those two goes That's down. That's a guru sniff test uh, in terms of chopping it up with him. I goofed around with him. I was like cursing around with him. He was laughing. I'm like, I like this guy. I definitely liked him. <laughs> All right, we're looking at your 
top 50 players. You narrow down the top 200 on your cheat sheet. And you go, the hell with that. Here's the 50 you need to focus on. Uh, let me see if I get another angle of a guy off you here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me find a good one. Uh, oh, I love this one because it's going to make people stop in their car and go, what the hell did you say? Ray She Rice of the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, look, um, the angle there is the ADP is suppressed because people are waiting for a pending suspension, but it does seem, and I haven't checked on in the last day or two, but it does see like the seem like the legal process may take a minute here. Mm-hmm. So this might be something that we're not getting addressed unless something else has come out. Um, I actually did like Rishi Rice as a prospect quite a bit. Uh, he did, though, completely usurp my boy uh, Sky Moore. Uh, I thought Sky Moore would get that slot job. Actually, Rishi Rice's season was almost exactly in line with what I had for Sky Moore. Uh, granted, that is, was never going to happen, apparently, because Sky is just not any good. He lost his confidence. But you do like that inside stuff. Uh, that was a. I thought that they would go with Sky there. Uh, to give him a good opportunity to excel, and they didn't. Reishi got the shot and did very well finding those little soft spots and sitting down underneath for Mahomes. So, you know, look, he's he's going to get all kinds of play here, yeah, and maybe a little less attention on him too as Hollywood Brown and Xavier Worthy are keeping those two deep safeties back there. So it's that's a really good environment for Reishi, but really the angle is – suppressed price based on the off field, but we might not get the impact of the off field this year. Yeah, I I think so. My buddy Drew Davenport, we had him on an auction show on the YouTube channel, which is doing incredibly well. If you're an auction drafter, go watch that on our Fantasy Points channel, uh, the great Drew Davenport. He's also a defense attorney and does a lot of legal work for the fantasy community. He doesn't think this goes down in 2025. So he, or it, until 2025. So if right. it does get pushed till then, again, suppressed value. Now you've got one of the apples of Mahomes' eye, uh, and you know he's going to be running wild underneath. It's crazy to think, John. A year ago, we were talking about there's no receivers in Kansas City. Now it's like, shit. There's too many receivers in Kansas City. Now we we, we got Hollywood yeah. Brown, who I love. I'm drafting him everywhere. We got Xavier Worthy. We still got Rishi Rice. Don't forget about Kelsey. If Sky Moore pops off this year, I mean, uh, will you break things? Will you just drink? Will you just call it as a year too early? You know, no. I I wrote an article. I, I at some point I'm going to publish it, but at the end of the day, um, there were there was plenty to like about Sky Moore. Sure, I don't think um, the mistake was egregious, honestly, because. I don't think they they used him optimally. So I guess the the mistake is he 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 ran fairly well. Mm-hmm. He was a little stiff laterally, uh, and the real question was, you know, is he a guy who can get open against man coverage in the NFL? I thought that he would simply because he'd be lining up inside. Mm -hmm. But the Chiefs obviously disagree with my assessment, and they didn't play him much inside, and he he struggled. So it it, it might not even be a a conversation if they used him the way I thought they would use him. But, uh, yeah, I guess the end of the day is if you have separation anxiety, uh, you know, it's probably you're on the right track, but here's the thing: I have separation anxiety with Rishi Rice, you know. But he got that slot job, and that was it, mm-hmm. you know. So, you know, obviously Sky Moore was a horrible, horrible position. Uh, the other thing with him, by the way, was I really do hate to say this as an old traditionalist, but in this day and age, if you're a pretty high pick and we and there's whispers that you might stink after one year, you probably stink. You really do. I hate to say it, but you probably do. It's a, it's a lesson learned where I say that with folks all the time in dynasty when they're like, Oh, and it, because does it happen? Sure. Where it's a wide receiver. It's like year two, year three. And they're like this guy, he'll break out and blah, blah, blah. Right. And I'm like, nah, 
you'd see it day one. Like these guys are so elite. Like if they don't break out in the first year, like I'm not in, I'm not buying it. Well, let's take a quick time out here, John. When we come back, we can talk a little quarterback. We can talk a little tight end and all kinds of fun stuff here. It's the draft plan show fantasy points podcast. All right. Rocking and rolling here. Brian Drake, the guru, John Hansen, talking draft plan. Uh, hope you guys are really digging this. Get over to fantasypoints.com. Use code score more. Save yourself 10% on a yearly subscription. All right, let's talk a little quarterback. And we tried to do it about 45 minutes ago, but you and I, you know, we're having fun here, feeling each other out. We're bouncing around, talking all kinds of dudes, and that's fine. Uh, people are loving it. So, Jordan Love, you listed 50 guys here that you want to base your drafts around and make sure that you get. The first name on the list is Jordan freaking Love. So, you know, you it looks like what, what you can get him, I don't know, uh, seventh, eighth round in a draft. Yeah. That's an easy yep. place to start at quarterback. You don't got to reach. You don't got to spend exorbitant draft capital. It's awesome. Yeah, and um, by the way, he he does fit the criteria, and I did say this last year. I, my, my favorite type of quarterback uh, is a guy who wins from the pocket and can crush you with his arm and throw 30-plus but also who runs a little and keeps that in his back pocket. And I actually wrote – uh, and did a video on love last summer where I'm like, yeah, I mean, I think we'll get 50 attempts right around there, uh, 250 yards right around then. And he was almost dead on, uh, exactly that he got, uh, let's see here. Was it? Yeah. He actually got 50 attempts for 247. Uh, I'm pretty sure I said 50 for 250. Uh, he also got four rushing touchdowns. I think I only had two or three. Uh, maybe we can't count on four. But I, I look. That's my that's my benchmark number. Give me, can you give me fifty attempts? Mm -hmm. Because if you do, and you're at you know four plus yards a, a pop, because if you're an athlete and you're running at fifty, you better be an athlete if you're running at fifty plus times at quarterback. And if you are, then you should get four yards a carry. Uh, and he got five yards a carry, and uh, you get a couple sneaked in there. And, and all of a sudden now we're augmenting the value pretty nicely. So that's my favorite quarterback, a guy I can rely on in the pocket. But, you know, it's hard to have a quarterback throw three touchdowns every single damn week. Sure. You know, every once in a while you need a little bit of luck. And it's nice to know that a guy like Jordan Love can score you four touchdowns on the ground like he did last year. Joe Burrow has been – was the previous example. You know, before I gravitated toward love, I was a Burrow guy. And, and that, well, he's been hurt a little bit. But, you know, two years ago, it worked out very, very well. Uh, I guess that would be 2022. It was, that, he was my guy. He was my number one guy, and it was good. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the prototype. You know, Dak has is, is got a little bit of that. Um, and the reason I, I like these guys is because, look, you're putting yourself – in harm's way a hundred plus times, you're probably going to get hurt unless you're Josh Allen. Apparently, uh, Jalen Hurts has had his problems. So has Lamar, obviously Richardson, mm -hmm. Kyler Murray's had problems. You know, these guys have problems, you know, every once in a while, a guy has a healthy year and he crushes it again. Josh Allen does it every year, but I, I just think that these guys are a little safer to back and a guy like love because he's not that sexy cheat code guy gets drafted 30 picks after Anthony Richardson. Mm -hmm. and, and Jordan Love has shown a ton more than Anthony Richardson, but AR is going 20 picks earlier. So, yeah, AR might have a little bit more upside, but he also has a lot more risk, and he's also more expensive. I, I'll, t I'll be fine with Jordan Love. I don't need my guy to go off every single week because they're going to have good players around him. Mm -hmm. Jordan Love can hold down the fort. Jordan Love was a QB1 last year from literally day one. We just didn't know it uh, as the season progressed, but Jordan Love took over the reins week one of 2023, first game as a starter, and he threw for 345 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, the next week, he threw three more tutties. You know, he did hit that little bit of a rough patch there midseason, uh, Maybe some of that was matchup based. I know it was a little worrisome, but he fought through it and 
found himself. And obviously the rest was history from week 10 on. He was absolutely fire on, on fire lights out fantasy juggernaut. And I see no reason why that won't continue with a year of seasoning under his belt. And also another schedule that, that looks phenomenal. I want to look at Anthony Richardson a little bit more in some of his ADP because nobody talks about Anthony Richardson like the fantasy community. I mean, he is like the bell of the ball right now. Everyone wants Anthony Richardson on their team. Hey, and I get it. I want Anthony Richardson on some hey, of my teams too. If I'm feeling frisky, I'll do it. He's on my list too. I'm very, very selective, but AR are. is on my list. I'm looking at his ADP and players going around him. So let's say, uh, you know, what I'm looking at right here, I'm pick 52 or so. So fifth round pick. So let's say, you know, late fourth, early fifth. I'm going to rattle some names off here. And again, it depends on how you build your team. Would you rather have Anthony Richardson or these guys uh, going right around him? Let's see. George Pickens. Well, the the real question is, do I want. George Pickens and Jordan Love. There you go. Or do I want Anthony Richardson and I'm trying to think of a good example? Jaden Reed. I'm looking at guys around his ADP. Jordan Love's yeah, ADP. Deont- Tank Dell, Zay Flowers, someone like that. Um, the the that's it. So I like George Pickens a lot this year. If I'm in round five and let's say I have already one, one running back, I've got my anchor, let's say open with Bijan. And then I, uh, I'm in round five and I'm between Pickens and Richardson. And we'll see by, by the way, about Ayuk going to the Steelers. If Ayuk goes to the Steelers officially, that kills Pickens. Yeah. Don't. But right now, before the trade is official, as we record this, I do love Pickens as a three because I think he could pop very well. So I want Pickens knowing I can get love later as opposed to taking AR, taking on that injury risk, taking on that that price hike, if you will. And now my receiver is a guy that I don't feel has the potential of George Pickens. There you go. So that that's really what I wanted to get to with that exercise of if you took Richardson there, like what? What is the opportunity cost? What are you missing out on? I'll say this. If I draft Anthony Richardson later on the draft, I love pairing him with Jaden Daniels just because why sure. the hell not? Let's get let's get crazy here. You want to get nuts? Mm-hmm. Let's get nuts, as George Costanza famously said, uh, because I think Daniels could have a really fun year as well. I, I did draft uh, AR uh, in one of these teams, actually. Uh, I'm trying to find it here. Uh, I think I, I think I did go there. Um, it, it wasn't bad. You know, here it is, uh, from the 12 spot actually. And, um, I think the reason I did it was because here's the, here's the open. As I said earlier in the podcast, if I am at 12, I, I probably do want to balance it out unless I get a crack at Jonathan Taylor and, you know, Jimmy or Gibbs, which I doubt. But in this one, they were both gone by the time I picked at 12. So I went Garrett Wilson came back, Saquon Barkley. Then I, again, I've got kind of my anchor running back. I hit DJ Moore and Pittman. So it's like, now I'm good at receiver. I don't, didn't love any of the running backs in round five. And I didn't love, love the tight end situation. So I was kind of stuck. So at that point, that's when I went with Anthony Richardson. Uh, it, it could happen to where he makes sense for me in the fifth round. But again, I, I my my preferred route would be love two or three rounds later. And if you're sitting there looking at your team five rounds in and you think you've got no juice and you're kind of like, right. man, I, I need an impact player here yeah. because I, I need somebody to make up for the fact that I got a bunch of boring exactly you know, scrubs here. So that, totally. that Richardson makes a ton of sense. Yep. Uh, so, so that's the quarterback play. If you want any more of John's late uh, plays, just go read the article. Again, we're, I'm not going to spoon feed it to you guys here. Let's talk tight end. And obviously everyone knows the love of, of, uh, you know, our boy Conklin. We don't have to talk too much about him. I know you drafted him on a bunch of your teams, but the number one guy that you said, I want to go base my plan around was Trey McBride. And it wasn't, you know, your boy Mandrews. It wasn't Kelsey. It wasn't Laporta. It was, I want to go get the second year 
tight end out of Arizona because again we talk about small uh, route trees out there. You know, I, I, what, what's a better way to say that? Receiving trees, receiving target groups. tree, target tree. Yeah. Thank you. It, it doesn't get much smaller than Arizona right now. It, it's not even a tree. It's like a, a stick with two prongs. You know. So yeah. talk to me a little bit about Trey McBride. Now, I do like Trey McBride, but he is a little bit like Anthony Richardson in that he's getting he's, pricier. Yeah, and it's a he's a little bit of a luxury uh, selection, but you know, I, I'm trying to stay focused to where I've been all off season on Trey McBride. You know, I don't know if you've listened to me, you know, if you've heard me, but before he started blowing up this year, like the previous year and a half, I did nothing but praise Trey McBride. I'm like, this guy is awesome. He's going to be really good. He's a great guy. He's a great kid. I watched him uh, practice for a week in Mobile, and he won every rep. I, that's all I saw. I'm like, this is easy, this mm -hmm. scouting. Trey McBride's good. Boom. <laughs> I mean, like, so I, I, I do love Trey McBride, but I do think it's a little bit of a, a luxury pick unless you can get him in the fifth. The the it's similar to what we just did with the exercise with Anthony Richardson. So you know let's let's, let's take a look that. at when Trey McBride's going off the board, and and see what we see there. Uh, All right, because you know I do have him high. Uh, oh, here you go. So here's Trey McBride. So he's going off the board. You know, 40, 46 or so, and some guys in that area. I mean. It depending the, the ADP is all over the place. A guy like Malik Neighbors, I think I got to take Malik Neighbors over Trey McBride, even with the bad quarterback. I mean, he the upside there is just massive. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I I would I'm not into Neighbors. I I, I hear you. I'm trying in my old age to not fall for every single like super sexy fantasy pick. You know what <laughs> I mean? Because that's been my downfall, getting uh, being a little too horrific. So I'm trying to be a little more judicious. I guess my point with McBride is it's not really him. I just, I, my actual number one guy is Ferguson. Turd Ferguson. Yeah, because I I just think, again, I really like Jake Ferguson this mm -hmm. year. I, I think he'll have a chance to be like a top seven guy, uh, but he's being drafted what? It's like the 10th something like that. I, I really like what I saw from him as another guy that I talked with at the combine, very smart guy. Uh, you know, he was awesome. And Dak needs his blankie in the middle of the field. He really does. And they're light at receiver. So I think my best chance to form the best starting lineup is to hold off and get uh, Ferguson. That said, similar to Love Richardson, I am in on McBride as well. If especially I can get him in the fifth, then that's almost a slam dunk. Mm -hmm. Because let's say I open with a run, let's say I open with Bijan or Brees, and then I just go boom, 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 and I take three receivers in a row. I do like Debo, uh, Skinny Batman, Devontae Smith, and and George Pickens. Let's say at that point, now I'm ready to pivot over because I've got my anchor running back. I have a threesome at wide receiver. I'm good. Now I kind of want to form the best possible starting lineup. So I will, in fact, look at quarterback or tight end. And that if it's quarterback, it's Richardson. And if it's tight end, it's Trey McBride. So I do like them. I would have to say uh, in a competitive league, you might be better off waiting and going with Ferguson than, than McBride. But if you can get him in the fifth, I'm f I sign off on that. I uh I actually have him higher than Laporta on on my board and that's because of volume. Uh I don't know if Laporta can re replicate the touchdown love that he got last year, 8.5% touchdown rate. Mm -hmm. Uh but yeah, that's where I'm at, you know. I always have guys that I like going leading up until the the value pick, you know what I mean? I don't want just like, oh, it's all do or die, it's Ferguson or bust. You know, mm -hmm. when I bake in a little flexibility, I'm like, oh, you know what? Love Ferguson, you know, eighth or ninth pick as, as a great ROI, optimal construction or whatever. But if I'm feeling really good in round five at Trey McBride's there, I'm going Trey. I'll go Trey McBride all day long. 
let's mention a little bit more about our guy, Tyler Conklin. If you're waiting, uh, I know we're, we're kind of beating people over the head with Tyler Conklin this year, but it's for good reason. He's playing with Aaron Rodgers. He's going to be on an offense that you know people are going to try to take away Garrett Wilson. Who knows what we get from big Mike Williams. You're going to get nothing from Lazard. Forget about him. So Tyler Conklin, you know, for a long period of time, forget Brees Hall coming out of the backfield, could be the second target as a receiver for the New York Jets. Now you just look at that value, John. I mean, you've got him listed at tight end 11. I mean, he's getting yeah. drafted as like tight end 19. So, I mean, you can get him whenever you want in a draft, and you just slide him right in your freaking lineup, baby. People are going to be like, how come this guy's not drafting a tight end? You know we have to start one in our league, and you're just like, nah. I'm good. I'm good. Just watch this. And then like the, you know, 12th round, you go up and you slap the name of Tyler Conklin on the board. Oh, I, I absolutely love it. I, I am uh, God so confident because, you know, I'm so confident in the take because it, it, it really is can't miss when you consider the, the price tag, which is free. Uh, but you, you're right. There's no doubt about it. Conklin is feeling it. Aaron Rodgers likes him. There, there's definitely some chemistry there. Conklin has been talking about, and they're clicking. They've been clicking. Uh, yeah, Brees Hall is going to be a guy that is going to command a lot of attention. And, of course, Garrett Wilson. Uh, they're going to try and cover Garrett Wilson with double coverage, safety top over the help, all kinds of ways. He's going to need another outlet guy. And, and there's no one else on the roster right now especially with Corley hurt that, that stands out. It, it's Tyler Conklin all day long. Just, just take them. A lot of people don't like taking two tight ends. I do uh, mm -hmm. because I think it gives you a chance to find a sleeper. Like let's say you'd go with McBride and then last pick of your draft, you take Conklin. I would not be shocked at all. If in a month into the season, you're like, yeah, hey, anybody want this Trey McBride guy? Cause I'm <laughs> rolling with Conklin baby. Cause he's getting five catches every single week. Especially those of you who play in deeper leagues. If you're in, you know, 14, 16 team leagues, having a second tight end, a viable second tight end is is huge because the waiver wire will be barren in those situations. So deep league guys, you know, you should definitely know the name of Tyler Conklin. Uh, does it matter, John, before we, you know, we wrap things up here, eight, 10, 12 team leagues, do you draft any differently depending on the league size? Yeah. 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 You certainly do. Um, obviously in an eight team league, I place a higher priority on give me a stud. I don't care what position. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll take a tight end earlier. I'll take a quarterback earlier, 10 or 12. I mean, I do think you need to understand the, in a 10 teamer, I'm going to be a little bit more inclined to go running back. Uh, I'd like to balance it out. Uh, get two running backs and two wide receivers in the first four rounds. This mm -hmm. way you're you're good. And then if you draft well, you'll be fine at wide receiver because you're going to have one or two high-end guys. So that's it. I mean, that's pretty much it. 14-teamer, I do like those because those Josh Palmer, Khalil Shakir sleeper picks means a lot more in those type of leagues. Um you don't want to get pinched a tight end in a 14 teamer or quarterback, ironically. Uh, so in a 10 or 12 teamer, those are the two positions I'm looking to wait on and take advantage of the quality depth. Yet in a 14 teamer, I am a little worried about getting left out in the dark, ironically, mm -hmm. at, at quarterback and tight end. So I maybe not both positions, but I, I do tend to find myself drafting quarterbacks a little earlier in a 14 teamer because if you're hosed at quarterback in a 14 teamer, and let's say another owner or two or three is hoarding two starters, you could be screwed. So I, I, I don't want to be screwed. So I, I make sure I'm I'm good uh, in a deeper, like a 14 teamer. So just to recap, everybody, we want you to go to fantasypoints.com. We want you to read this masterpiece that John puts out every single year. He gives you the plan by position. He gives you his quarterback plan, running back, receiver, tight end, talks about but players he loves in that group. He also has his Hanson 50, the 50 players. Listen, you can have every cheat sheet in the world. Just put these 50 names on a list. If you can build your roster off these guys, you're going to kick ass. And then also at the end, his favorite rounds by pick. You can make note of that. 
And then he puts the draft plan into action, John. I love when you do this because there's so many folks out there, and, and you'll see it on YouTube. John does a lot of this uh, over at youtube.com slash fantasy points. Wait, I got the first pick. Who should right. I draft? How should my team look? And you put the draft plan into action from the number one spot, from the three spot, from the five, uh, seven, nine. You go all the way down. And you give people a look at, if you do it like I'm telling you, here's how your team would look. For me, if I'm a guy who's, you know, hey, we all got lives out there. You got wife, you got kids, yeah. you got jobs. Yeah. You can't spend endless hours a day researching fantasy football. That's why you read this. So now when you go to your draft, you go, oh, you know, I'm going to look around these rounds. This is where this guy should be. John said to take them. Bing, bang, boom. Get ready to cash some checks and hoist some trophies. Look, I'm, I'm, this all I'm doing. So. I, I've been I've been eyeballing the damn board for months now. Uh, been you know doing this thirty years. Uh, feel like I have a good handle on it. Last year wasn't as good of a year as the year before, so I'm due. Uh, we got that going for us. But I would always argue that they're good picks. They're not all going to hit, but they're good picks. Mm -hmm. There's thought that goes behind every one of them. I really tried to narrow it down. I mean, there's a number of names that I kind of like that I could have threw out there and maybe give myself a better chance to have more guys right. But I'm like, you know what? No, I, I'm going to up the criteria, and maybe that will be what makes things even more accurate. So I'm feeling a good year. And um, as always, we just let the chips fall where they may because we don't have access to the results. As long as we feel good about the positions that we have and uh, aren't going to really kick ourselves too hard after the results are in, I'm, I'm good. So I feel like it's a great list. Always feel this way, honestly, but in in particular this year, I'm a little bit more homed in on it. Not doing the radio, not as distracted. I'm literally just trying to make the best picks for summer drafts because I am a season long guy. This is my deal. This is my time to shine a little bit. Yeah, I'm doing the radio now, so now I'm busy. Yeah. I'm, I'm you know running everywhere, doing 58 jobs at once. But this was a lot of fun. Uh, I always love reading the draft plan article. Uh, I've got it up on my screen right now. I'm sure I'll reread it two or three times before my big home league draft on Labor Day weekend. Uh, if you have any questions, don't feel like you can't talk to us. I'm at Drake Fantasy on Twitter. He's at Fantasy underscore Guru. You want to get even closer to us? Hop in that Discord over at fantasypoints.com. Our subscriber discourse is a great place to come hang out, ask questions about shit. You can ask questions about everything. We got every topic under the sun under there, and we got a lot of guys who are in the chat answering your questions. It's a really fun, really fun community. So, John, we've said a lot. We've, uh, yeah. We haven't said it all because we got to leave something to the imagination here, but uh, I I'm excited for this season to kick off, man. I think we've got people set in the right direction. I think uh, the the podcast kind of went all over the map, but yeah. if you take in the entirety of it, I mean, you, you get it, you get, you get the vibe. You're not going to get every single pick, every single player, every one, all of the 50 that's, you know, on the website and all that. But I think we, I think we laid it out pretty well. It was all over the place, but in totality, <laughs> it, the meat is in there, the meat and the potatoes. It's in the pot here that we just did. It is. Hey, yeah, you know, Kaplan and Hansen did shows together for 25 years or 20 years, right? Me and John been doing them together for uh, about six weeks. So give us a second here. We're having we're having a lot of fun, uh, you know. And this is a great show. I'm so happy to be a part of it, and I'm so happy to say we've reached the end of the line, folks. So enjoy. Let us know how these drafts come out. I want to tweet at me with these draft boards. Let us know you got a bunch of the guys in the Hansen 50 there. So for John, I'm Brian. We'll see you next time on the Fantasy Points Podcast.